There are many different ways of describing an integrative family therapy practice. Here we've chosen to concentrate on the therapeutic alliance as an integrating process. You'll see Mark take time to ask the family, how will we work together? The therapeutic alliance is made up of a number of components. These include the emotional bond between the therapist and family members, the family's engagement with the therapy, the safety family members feel in the context of therapy, and the shared sense of purpose that the family have regarding the therapy. In family therapy terms, this is sometimes called talking about talking. And the advantage of doing this is that you can name challenges to the therapy without actually facing them, and thereby prepare the family for them occurring in the future. In this clip, one significant family member is missing. Now this is a frequent issue for family therapists. It also poses an important ethical question about talking about someone who's not present. However, if they need reassurance in order for them to come to therapy, this conversation has to happen. In such a situation, the therapist needs to remain neutral and avoid taking sides or being critical of the absent person. This would most certainly prevent them from coming into the therapy room. So, if we're going to work together and meet regularly and try and help you sort out the difficulties that are going on in the family, it's important that we have a conversation about what I need to know about you and how I need to behave to try to help you get the most out of these sessions. So does anyone have any ideas um, about what I need to think about when I'm working with you? Well, I think neither Nick nor Joel are very good in think, talking about their worries or okay. Their problems. Okay. So neither Nick, uh, neither Nick, Nick nor Joel, nor Joel okay, yeah. um, are very good at talking. Okay, is that right, Joel? Um, I guess. Okay. I guess I might think that that's one of the reasons why you're here, that, that somehow talking is difficult in the family. It's hard to talk about what's worrying people and sharing that. Okay, so if that's an issue, Maria, for Joel um, and Nick, and we've got to recognise that Nick's not here, so we, someone might have to help you think about what I might to do, do for him. What, what do you think I have to do to try to make them feel more comfortable talking here? Maybe go slowly. Okay, Maybe. okay. So okay. Give them time to come around. Right, okay. Okay. Do you think that's right? Yeah. Tell me, Laura, are you better at talking than, than Joel or your dad? Um, not really. Not really? Because, um, I guess I sometimes just get a bit nervous when I'm around people that I don't really know. Okay, okay. Does that make it difficult sometimes for you? Yeah. Okay. So it might, it might be hard for you to talk here too. Yeah. All right. So, so everyone's a bit nervous about talking. They're not very good at talking. They've not maybe learned how to talk in these settings. Um, so Maria, you're saying I need to go slowly. Okay. Is there anything else that I need to do? For instance, Joel's here and Joel's sitting there and he's um, obviously finding it difficult to talk. Uh, is there anything I can do to try to help him feel more comfortable um, apart from just going slowly? I think he may just uh, be worried to get blamed. Okay, okay, all right, that's interesting. So, so Joe, your mum is saying, uh, she's saying two things, she's saying Nick's not very good at talking and he might need me to go slowly. I'll have to think about that when he comes next time. Um, but she's also saying that you might feel blamed. Do you think you could help me understand what that's about? Um, well, it, it's like I sort of feel like if I'm talking about um, something, uh, people might just assume that it, it's my fault. I guess I'm trying. To, okay. I just. 
Okay. So there's something about you might feel that, that do you think that I might blame you? Well, no, I mean, it, it's mostly, it's mostly Nick. I okay. Feel. I mean, he, okay. I feel like he blames me for a lot of things. Right. Okay. Right. So, what do you think I can do in this room when you come to help you feel less blamed, to help you talk more, um, and to do something about that experience you have that, that you feel that Nick's blaming you? What do you think I, I can do? Um, uh, I guess just sort of tell Nick to be quiet. Okay, okay, all right. So, so when Nick's here, I've got to be very sensitive to when he says something that you might interpret as blaming you and try and calm it down. Yeah? That kind of right? Yeah. Okay. Um, I, Nick's not here. He can't answer for himself. Do you two think Nick will be up for me doing that? Um, I, I, I don't know. Okay. Kind of, okay. I feel like probably not. He, he feels like he's... I mean, it feels like he's just the sort of person that doesn't listen to anyone. Okay. You know? Okay. So he doesn't find it easy to talk and he also struggles to listen, Joe. Are the two connected, do you think? Maybe. Okay. So maybe um, he's not used to listening very well, so he's not used to talking very well. Maybe. Okay. Um, Maria, uh, we're talking about your husband and, and Joel's helping me work out what I've got to do to help Joel feel more involved here. Um, is what Joel is saying about Nick fair or, or is it something else that I need yeah, to think about? I, I think it kind of is because he's not, he isn't uh, used to doing this, like talking and okay. when he has something okay. in his mind, I okay. really need to drag it out of him. Okay, right. It's so, very difficult. Okay. So I've got to somehow drag things out of Nick and kind of help Joel feel less blamed. That's a tall order, but uh, okay. All right, so let's do those. What about yourself? What do I need to understand? Joel, you tell me about your mum. What do I need to do to help your mum feel that she can contribute here, that she can say things? Uh, um, I I don't know. Are you going to... Just sort of um, I, I don't know. You don't know. Do you think um, I might end up relying on your mum too much because she might have to talk um, for you and Nick? Well, yeah, I, 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 so I sort of feel like. Um, she she sort of does try to fill in for other for other people. Okay. If that makes okay. sense. Yeah, yeah. Just sort of yeah. That makes sense. That makes sense. Yeah. Okay. So So do you think this is going to work if the only person that talks is your mum? No. No, okay. So somehow we've got to help her sometimes perhaps be a bit quieter, okay? And help you and, and Nick say things. How about Laura? What do I what do I have to do to help Laura feel that she can uh, contribute to these sessions and and get something from them? Well, yes, she as, as she says uh, said she's a bit shy around right. uh, people she doesn't know and she can't concentrate for too long. Right. Okay. But she she's okay. she likes drawing. She's okay. good at drawing and okay. stuff. All right. Would you like to do some drawing now, Laura? Yeah, okay. What would you like to draw? Um, why don't I draw pictures of things like what you're talking about and how much you're talking. Okay, alright, that sounds good. You go ahead, see what you can do, and then we'll talk about that later maybe, yeah? Okay, alright. So, um, for us to work together um, and for people to feel safe here, um, I have to help 
um, uh, Nick listen and Nick talk more. I have to help uh, Joe feel less blamed. I have to help Mum speak, but not for other people. Okay, I've got to make sure that Laura has got chance to contribute in her own way. Um, how about um, I'm hearing already that there's a bit of tension in the family. I'm hearing from Joel that there's a bit of tension um, between Joel and Nick. What do you think I need to do? What do you think we all need to do to manage that tension? Is it likely that there'll, there'll be a big row? And if there is, is that going to be helpful? What do you think we should do about that? Maybe we should uh, try to listen to each other okay. and maybe okay. Okay. to understand each other properly and maybe react differently. Okay, right. So we're kind of building up a few rules, uh, ideas that we listen, that we try to react differently, okay? And we try to make sure that things stay calm. If things did get very difficult, what do you think I should do? So let's say, I don't know, you two started to exchange words and say rude things to each other. What do you think I should do? What do you think, Joe? Probably just tell us all to shut up. Okay, all right, okay. So you, you give me permission to do that, Joe. I yeah? do. Okay. Yeah. Maria, and when Nick comes, will he give me permission to do that? I think so. You think so? Yeah. And Laura, will you give me permission to do that? Did you hear what we're saying? Yeah, okay. Does it, do people start to shout at each other at home sometimes? Yeah? Quite often. Quite often. Do they? Mm -hmm. And does that get frightening? Um, sometimes. Does it upset you? Mm, sometimes, not that often though. Okay, sometimes but not that often. Okay, so whenever it happens here, I've got permission to ask people to stop. Okay. What about um, are people crying? Who in the family is most likely to cry in these sessions, do you think? Probably mum. It's, it's mum. Yeah. Yeah, Joe? Okay. Does mum get upset at home? Does she cry at home when things are difficult? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. So, um, um, does, do you mind when she cries? No, it, it feels, just sort of feels bad. Okay. It's like... Okay. Um, is it bad because she's crying because something's gone wrong, or is it just does it just upset you when she cries? Yeah, I think that's it probably it upsets you. Yeah. Laura, do you get upset when Mum cries? I don't really like it when Mum cries you because don't. it makes me sad most oh. of the time. Oh. Okay, does it? Oh. Okay. So, Maria. It's like I'm a fourteen. <laughs> well, I don't think we're saying that, but um, um, um. What do you, what's your advice to me? Because therapy can be difficult. People can say things that are hurtful and people can find out about things that make them un unhappy with things. What do you think we should do if... Is it okay for you to cry a little bit? Do, can we manage a little bit of upset? Or do I need to give you tissues? What, what do I need to do? Right, I'll, I'll try to control myself, but uh, yeah, maybe to give me a time because... Actually, when I cry, you know, it releases the stress, and then okay. I luckily I'm not uh, upset for that long. After I cry, I can can come back to you know okay. Okay. to normal. Okay, so just give you some give you some just time. Just give me some okay. time, please. Give you some time. And maybe the dish, tissues. And the tissues. Okay, <laughs> brilliant. Okay, so we've got that one. Now the other thing in that, in my head that we need to do just very quickly um, is. Uh, you are Slovakian, so is there anything I need to understand about about the uh, the way you think about family life, um, the way you think about bringing up the children, which might be something that I wouldn't be used to, might not know about? Well, maybe just um, I may because as I'm Slovakian, um, I may not uh, understand everything you say. Okay. Maybe I, okay. you may use some okay. phrases I haven't heard of before, and okay. you know, okay. idioms and right. stuff. And okay. do you feel do you feel confident that you could say to me, Mark, I don't understand what you're saying? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Is that something that the, the fam sometimes that Joe? Do you use a, a phrase um, that your mom doesn't understand? Is that is that a common thing, or is it really quite rare? Um, it's 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 usually. Quite rare, but it does it does 
happen every now and then. Okay, okay. When you think about your mum, and, and she's got a Slovakian heritage, do you think that she has particular attitudes and ideas about family and about how children should grow up that, that you notice? I don't, I, don't, I, don't, I don't really notice anything. I mean, it's, it's been my, my whole life. So okay, really... okay. So what, when you talk to your friends at school, you don't hear, well, they do it this way and my mum thinks we should do it that way. You don't hear those kind of conversations. Um, not this, it's not really the sort of thing that we, we talk about. You don't about. talk about, okay. Maria, do you think there are any things that I need to know about? Any words I need to know about from Slovakia, that Slovak that I should know? No? Okay, okay. So it's just a matter of language yes. and you'll let me know. Yeah, okay. you know something okay. So our final thing to do to work out how we're going to work together, is work out what our goals are. What do we want to achieve? What, how, what kind of changes do you guys want to see in your family that we can work on in these sessions? Who would like to start? Have you got an idea about how you'd like your family to get better, for things to, to change a bit, Laura? Well, maybe I'd like to start with everyone to stop arguing. OK. I might write these, write these on the board. So, so Laura's goal is to have less arguing or stop arguing, Laura? Um, less arguing. Less arguing, okay, less arguing. And also if Joel could play with me sometimes, Joel, help me with my iPad. Okay, so you'd like a bit more help from your brother, yeah? Okay. Okay. Joel, what would you like to achieve in these sessions? How would you like your family to change and things to get better? Um. I think I like people probably just to sort of calm down, I guess, because okay. it's sort of, it's, although I guess that is, that is, with, that comes with the less arguing. It but does, isn't it, doesn't it? It's very similar to your sisters. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Anything else? Um... can't think of anything that wouldn't go against anything else okay. on the board. I guess I've heard that your relationship with Nick isn't always as good as it could be. Would you like to improve that? Would you like well, that to change? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, okay. Okay. Lovely. And Maria, what do you think? What would you like? How would you like things to change? What would your girls be? I would like uh, Joel to feel better and get out of his depression. And okay come out of his room more often so he can have a family dinner. Okay, so Joe will feel better and have more family time. More family time. And if Nick were here, does anybody have any ideas what Nick might want to get out of these sessions? Yes, well, I think he may want the, the, pretty much the same and maybe as well that Joel would um, have a uh, different attitude towards him as well. Okay. So again, it's something but about I their think, relationship. Yeah, yeah. they're re like, okay. I think both ways, okay. not just Joel's attitude towards us, okay. but both but Nick's ways. Attitude Nick's attitude to Joel, to which is what Joel's well. been saying, hasn't he? <laughs> yeah. Okay. So what has Laura drawn? Before we finish today, what's Laura drawn to show us? Would you like to share? Well, I sort of done it so bigger blocks for the people who've said right. quite a lot and smaller boxes for people who haven't. Okay. And then I've put a dash in it every time someone's spoken. Ooh, now who have you missed out? You. Yes, you've missed me out. Where would I be, Laura? Would I be saying more than mum or less than mum? A bit more. Okay, there we are. Thank you for that. This 20 minute clip has shown Mark address the major issues that arise in the Therapeutic Alliance, such as pacing, family expectations, family members blaming each other, and conflict and strong emotions which could make people feel unsafe. During the conversation, Mark is careful to share responsibility with family members to make the family therapy work for them. He's also taking into account 
how children can contribute in non-verbal ways to the work. It's also important to take into account cultural issues in this context.